Welcome to the First Day in Me Church Manassas broadcast, where the Holy Spirit empowers us to come together in the spirit of unity, ready to work and willing to serve. give God praise for our young people today who are serving here in worship. The anointing of God certainly is on their lives and we give him all praise, honor, and glory. Melodies from heaven rain down on me. Amen and amen. Let us look to the Lord. Father God, we come before your presence this morning. First, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your mercy and for your grace. And God, we come this morning because we recognize that you are 
an awesome God. You are a powerful God. And Lord, we just thank you for your protection. We thank you for watching over us this week and providing for our every need. God, we're asking now your blessings upon those who have lost loved ones, God. We are praying for those families who have lost uh, their children uh, as a result of uh, police violence against them. God, we are praying that you would bring comfort and peace, God. In, in, a, in a season where they do not understand why uh, it has happened to their child. But God, we are lifting them up to you this morning and asking you to bless them and to touch them in a special way, God. We thank you now because we know that you are always speaking to us. And so, God, we pray in the midst of this virtual space, in the midst of this worship experience, God, that you would speak a word that will help us speak a word that would challenge us, speak a word that would encourage us, speak a word that would move us from our complacency to be more bold and to be more courageous of the things that you will have called us to do. And so, God, I pray now that you decrease me and increase your spirit and your will. Have your way in this place, God, and we will give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. It is in your son's name, Jesus, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Uh, the scripture has been read into your hearing, but I just want to lift up that 18th verse out of Luke's uh, gospel, that fourth chapter. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. We ask your prayers on this sermonic thought, our mandate for ministry ministry, our mandate for ministry. Uh, at the beginning of Luke's gospel in this fourth chapter, we see that Jesus had been led into the wilderness where he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And it was after he had fasted and prayed in the wilderness that Jesus' ministry now begins. It begins with a clear focus that ought to affect then the ministry of the church. Jesus' focus should affect the ministry in which God has called each of us to serve. It is a word for all who call themselves Christian. It is a word that is focused on a social justice ministry. The church must find its reference of action in this biblical pronouncement that Jesus made at the beginning of his ministry. It is important to understand understand that social justice is not an afterthought in the ministry of Jesus, but social justice is the essence of the ministry of Jesus. Some folks have chosen to eliminate it from their understanding of ministry. I, I was in a dialogue just this week over, over some of the televangelists that don't even address matters of social issue. Why? Because they don't feel that it affects them at all. But you cannot be a Christian and not own and embrace the social justice component of Jesus' ministry. You cannot be faithful to the life and sacrifice of Jesus Christ and ignore that there is a social justice emphasis to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Social justice is critical to the authenticity of our witness and it shows up in speaking truth to power and engaging the in equities that we see in our society. You cannot be a faithful Christian and ignore the social justice mandate of the gospel of Jesus Christ and his ministry. Jesus confronted the circumstances and situations of his time as a model for us to be engaged in confrontation and in bringing about a change in the world. Too many folk would rather have a religion of comfort. Too many folk would rather have a religion of convenience. They don't want uh, to be inconvenienced. Too many folk want a religion of non-confrontation just as long as everything is good in my house, as long as I have a job, as long as I have money in the bank, as long as my children 
husband are doing good, as long as my children are doing well in school, Lord have mercy. We want a, 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 a religion that, that doesn't want to be confrontational. We want a religion that's comfortable. Uh, we sing through our problems, but we ignore our hurt and our pain. But we have been called to take on and engage in a war against evil. We have been called to take on the war against hatred and racism and the, uh, the presence of oppression in our society. It is important to hear this text because Jesus said this is a mandate of the spirit. The authority for this kind of social justice ministry is authorized by the spirit. Jesus said the spirit authorizes and ordains our participation in social justice. He said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. God is leading me to do what I am doing. Jesus said this ministry is sanctioned by God. This ministry of social justice, the spirit of God has sanctioned our participation in social justice. We are in the line of God's purpose when we speak up for injustices and challenge the systems and those who would oppress people and take their lives right before our eyes. All of us have followed the recent wave of violence against African American men and women. On Tuesday afternoon, when we learned the jury had reached a verdict, we sat in front of our TVs on pins and needles, wasn't taking any phone calls, wasn't looking at any texts. Our focus was on that TV screen, even though we were on pins and needles, wondering what the outcome was going to be. We were holding our breaths. As a matter of fact, many have been holding their breath since that ex-officer arrogantly and nonchalantly knelt on George Floyd's neck for nine minutes and 26 seconds with no regard that he was depriving George Floyd of breath, that George Floyd was dying, that George Floyd was dead. During the trial, we watched the defense attorney blame George Floyd for his own death due to pre-existing medical medical conditions and even carbon monoxide that might have been coming from an exhaust pipe in a gas electric hybrid squad car. As the jury was deliberating, preparation was being made for the possibility of unrest. We were on pins and needles holding our breath. And when the verdict was finally announced guilty on all three counts, we exhaled. We breathed. There was jubilation in the air. You could see it all across the nation where people were hugging and embracing but then we heard of the shooting of Dante Wright and five other persons since then over the years church there has been a growing sense of desperation in the African American community because the criminal justice system devalues the lives of black and brown people. There is something out of balance with respect to the way that the criminal justice system in our nation responds to the minorities in this country. We are especially vulnerable to violence, to higher rates of incarceration and death in the legal system than any other race in the nation. What happens to African American men and women is that it doesn't seem like their lives matter. Shonda Smith Baker, the Minneapolis Foundation's Chief Impact Officer and Senior Vice President stated, and I quote, community activism and advocacy are necessary to create the types of changes that we need to see in policing our communities. The people who have created the current system are not equipped to invent the future of policing. 
policing. The future of public safety and policing must embed reforms that emerge from communities that have experienced the most harm. I've come to remind us that all of us have an assignment. Each one of us has a divine assignment that should be taken seriously. Jesus is clear on his assignment in Luke's gospel. Jesus confronted the circumstances and situations of his day as a model for the 21st century. And so, church, we must engage in confrontation in order to make changes in the world. Too many of us, though, have a religion of comfort. Too many of us have, have and want a religion of convenience and non-confrontation. But we have been called to take on and engage in a war against hatred and evil and, and racism and the presence of oppression in our world. It is important that we hear this text because it's not just a good idea. It is a mandate of the spirit. The authority for this kind of social justice is authorized according to Jesus. It is authorized by the spirit. Jesus said the spirit authorizes and ordains our participation in social justice. Now that doesn't mean everybody's going to be out there protesting in the streets, but there is something that you can do. Jesus said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. God is leading me to do this. This is sanctioned by God. The spirit of God has sanctioned this. The spirit of God has sanctioned our participation. We are in line with God's purpose when we speak up for the injustices and challenges in our structures that oppress people and kill people. We must speak up for the health care disparities and economic inequities and the inequality with respect to the distribution of wealth in our society. We must speak up for the criminalization of those with mental illness. They end up in a jail cell or dead versus getting the real care that they need. I know you don't like this kind of message, but the spirit ought to cause us to be engaged and you ought to check out what kind of spirit you have if all the spirit does is let you sit on your rusty dusty and sing while the world goes to hell in a handbasket. You ought to question your spirit and your spirituality if you have a good feeling on the inside, but it doesn't challenge you to participate in helping to make our society a better place. As a matter of fact, we don't need that kind of spirit, that kind of spirit, that one of laziness, and keep looking straight ahead, laziness and complacency. That is not a transformative spirit. That kind of spirit doesn't change anything. We get confused about the spirit. Jesus said, the spirit led me to engage. The spirit authorized me to make a difference in the world. Jesus' understanding of the scripture is that it is transformative. It can change the world. The spirit that is driving young people of every race, color, and creed is the same spirit that is calling us to engage and take on the systems of this country and speak truth to power. Jesus said it, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And so church, the spirit requires every now and again that you have to sacrifice. Now Jesus doesn't call us to sacrifice every day. You don't sacrifice something every day. But there are times in our lives, in our ministries, that we have to sacrifice time. We have to sacrifice effort. We have to sacrifice resources. We have to sacrifice ourselves, Lord have mercy, to do the work of the Lord. Lord have mercy. The spirit of the Lord is one that is transformative. The authority of the ministry of social justice comes from the spirit. It is a mandate for, from the spirit. The spirit has anointed me to do what I have been assigned to do it. And so therefore you ought not to be afraid. Now I get it because sometimes when God calls us out of our comfort zone and God puts us in places that are unfamiliar to us, it does bring about fear. But fear should never overtake 
take us to the point that we cannot get anything done for the Lord. Why? Because God anoints us to do the work. God anoints us to carry out the purpose that he has given each one of us. Anointing is for anybody that wants to have the supernatural power and the enablement to do what they can do to help somebody else's life be better. Whenever someone acts as if the anointing is just for their own elevation, whenever somebody acts as if the uh, anointing is for their own glorification, you know right then that they are not anointed. You are not anointed when you tear down all the good that somebody else has done to make something good for somebody else. When you think that the anointing is just so people can pat you on the back and say, oh, you sure did good a job did a good job. That is not the anointing. The anointing is so that somebody else's life might be made better. We need to be anointed. We need to be empowered. We need to be enabled to upset the status quo. There are some things that are going down in this country, but I do believe they are not going to stay that way. Now, it's going to take us some time, and it's going to take us some moving to get through what has been systemically embedded in our society and all the work that we have done and all the work that we are doing we can't get tired now because God is showing us the light at the end of the day that God is blessing us and God will continue to bless us and free our people but it's going to take work on our part uh, after all, when Jesus comes into your life, uh, he does not leave you the same way he found you. Think about it, church. Uh, are you the same person you are today that you were 10 years ago? Oh, think about it. Are you the same person you are that you were last week? I hear you. Yeah, I'm the same person and something is wrong. Something ought to be changing in your life. Jesus, when he comes into your life, Jesus will never leave you the way that he found you. There have been some ups and downs in your life life but Jesus knows how to pull you through Jesus knows how to bring you out Jesus knows how to turn you around Jesus knows how to work it out Jesus knows how to fix things for his glory and even now God is making things better and so no matter what the structure no matter what the system no matter what the power Jesus came to make everything better and so what does the spirit anoint Jesus to do he comes to preach good news to the poor. He comes to release those who are in prison out of prison. He comes to give freedom to those who are present. I'm talking, I'm not talking about prisoners behind bars, although it could be, but prisoners of your own mind, your mindset is in prison to the ways that you continue to do things. Those bad habits, uh, those bad ways, you are a prisoner to your own self, but Jesus said, the anointing of God is upon me uh, to to free you out of your own prisons. He has come to bring healing to all who hurt and are in pain. It is his mission, his ministry, and his purpose. Jesus fulfills God's intention for the world. Lord have mercy. No one else could do it but Jesus. No one else can do it but you and I. The Spirit is anointing men, women, boys, and girls. The Spirit is anointing them to lead in this unprecedented season. Something good, church, is going to come out of this. He is anointing the body of Christ with all of our gifts and even with all of our flaws. The Spirit is anointing us, and the Spirit will continue to lead us. We just have to listen carefully and listen closely to what the Spirit is saying so that we don't mistake our own will for God's will. We have to listen carefully and closely to what the Spirit is saying so that we don't mistake our aspirations for Christ's mission. It's going to take work, but it is our mandate for ministry. God has chosen you. God has chosen me to tell the good news to the poor. The Lord has sent you, the Lord has sent me to give sight to the blind, to set those who are oppressed free, to bring healing to those who are hurt. That is 
our mandate for ministry. Amen. Father God, we just come before your presence thanking you for this mandate that your spirit is with us. And God, even in these times, there seems to be fear. But God, I pray today that you help us to rise above our fear, to move in the power of your spirit, to bring about change in this world. Lord, that was a reason you had us shut down and shut in for over a year now. God, it is a time that I believe that you are renewing and that you are restoring and that you are refreshing. And so God, I pray that as you continue to work and move by your spirit, that we would humble ourselves to hear what it is that you are saying to us. Oh God, some of us uh, in this pandemic have, have just seen it as a time to chill out and relax and to take a break. <laughs> uh, but God, you are still calling us to serve. You're calling us to serve. And so Father, I pray that you would empower each one of us to move forward as you lead and guide us. Help us in our weakness. Help us in our complacency. Help us in our procrastinating. Help us, God, to do what you have called us to do for that mandate, that mandate of ministry is the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me, he has anointed you to bring deliverance. And so God, we thank you. We give you all praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, this morning, if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we invite you to accept Christ into your heart by simply saying a prayer of salvation, Lord, I want you to come into my life. I want that power. I desire that anointing to do the work that you have called me to do. If that is you this morning, would you call the number that is on the bottom of the screen? Someone is waiting there to talk with you, to pray with you, to walk with you. If you desire to be a member of First AME Church of Manassas, we invite you to be a part of our ministry where God continues to thrive, where God continues to allow us to grow and flourish, even in this season of lockdown. If that is you this morning, we look forward to sharing with you. Amen, and God bless you. This has been the First AME Church Manassas special online worship service. We pray that you were truly blessed and encourage you to share this message with everyone you know. We temporarily switched to this special online worship service for the health and safety of our congregation and those that worship with us and strongly urge everyone to follow the directions of health professionals to keep you, your family, and loved ones safe. We also ask that you continue to regularly support First AME Church of Manassas through your generous tithes and offerings through PushPay by texting Fame Church to 77977. Or you can give online at famechurch.com forward slash giving. Or you can mail your contributions to First AME Church of Manassas, 10313 South Grand Avenue, Manassas, Virginia, 20110. Once again, we pray that you were blessed by today's message and encourage you to share it post it, and bless somebody else with a word from God. And most importantly, let us continue to pray for our world, our leaders, and health professionals, as well as the most vulnerable among us. Be safe and be blessed.